Hi, are you researching Python frameworks to become a better developer and to get developer contracts? Well, then this video is for you because that's exactly what I'm going to give you. So we're going to cover the types of frameworks, the best current frameworks for this year and their uses, and the differences between frameworks and libraries, which a lot of developers get wrong. So why am I qualified to talk about this? Well, I've been in web development for 11 years, and I'm currently working directly with over 200 freelancers, developers, and agency owners. So this video is for people who are serious about learning Python and getting contracts. So before we dive into the content, do click on the subscribe button and the bell notification for all notifications icon so that you get future updates on more Python tutorials. So who uses Python? Full stack developers, backend developers, and front end developers. There are three types of Python frameworks. First one is the full stack framework. Such frameworks are one stop solutions for all developer requirements. They feature form generators, form validation, and template layouts. This is usually available in a full stack framework. The second type of Python framework is the micro framework. These are light to weight frameworks that don't offer additional functionalities and features such as database abstraction layers, form validation, and specific tools and libraries. Developers using a micro framework usually need to add a lot of code and additional requirements manually. So the third type of Python framework is the asynchronous framework. Any asynchronous framework is a micro framework that allows for handling a large set of concurrent connections. Usually an asynchronous framework is built for Python using the programming languages asyncio library. So now let's get into the list of the most popular frameworks and their uses. The first one is Django from djangoproject.com. The free to use and open source full stack Python framework includes a huge amount of inbuilt features rather than offering them as individual libraries. Django makes use of its object relational mapper for mapping objects to database tables. This results in allowing the code to work across different databases, as well as making it easier to migrate from one database to another. So this allows the code to work across different databases, as well as making it easier to migrate from one database to another. Django features ready to use libraries and authentication support. The second most popular framework for Python currently is Flask from flask.pocoo.org. This is a micro framework available under the BSD license. Flask allows developers to build a solid web application foundation from where it is possible to use any kind of extensions required. This micro framework is compatible with Google App Engine and it has a built-in fast debugger and restful request dispatching. It also features support for plugging in any ORM. So the third most popular Python framework is Tornado from tornadoweb.org. So Tornado is an open source Python framework and an asynchronous networking library. It's a tool to build high performance, high concurrent user amount apps. So the fourth most popular framework is AIOHTTP. It relies heavily on Python 3.5 and beyond features such as async and awaits. In addition to being a server web framework, AIOHTTP can also serve as a client framework. It supports both client WebSockets and server WebSockets without the callback hell. The fifth most popular Python framework is FastAPI. FastAPI is a high performance framework. It basically is a web framework for building APIs with Python 3.6 and beyond based on standard Python type hints. It's very high performance and on par with Node.js and Golang. The sixth most popular Python framework is Bottle. This micro framework creates a single source file for every application developed using it. This micro framework for Python was originally developed for building APIs. Other than the Python standard library, Bottle has no dependencies required for crafting small web applications. One of the most important advantages of using Bottle is that it allows developers to work closer to the hardware. So the seventh most popular Python framework is Pyramid. So this is a full stack framework for Python and the primary goal of this open source Python based web development framework is to achieve as much as possible with minimalistic complexity. It features flexible authentication and authorization, uh, function decorators, predicates, and renderers. So what's the difference between a framework and a Python library? It's kind of what happened in the industrial revolution. We went from 
Families running their own little production facilities where they did everything from scratch in the big backyard, essentially, or in a shed to create basic necessities to having a bunch of factories churning out cheaper, better quality products at a thousand times the efficiency, right? That's basically what happened when developers started using frameworks. And by efficiency, I don't just mean how well the code works. I also mean how fast it's created. So a web framework is a collection of packages or modules which allow developers to write web applications or services without having to handle such low level details as protocols, sockets, or process thread management. They promote rapid development and clean design. They are developed by a group of experienced programmers who aim to remove the hassles of developing and allow teams to focus on writing code without having to reinvent the wheel every time. That means writing fewer lines of code. A framework usually includes the structure and foundation for building. Some frameworks contain basic code that use libraries. Frameworks define how you solve a problem and usually include uh, tools to use their ways to solve problems. Python libraries, however, are a set of useful functions that eliminate the need for writing code from scratch. There are over 130,000 Python libraries present today. A library in Python is a pre-built piece of code that can do all the things you are too lazy or inexperienced to do, or if you're just pressed for time, you can also use them. In the past, people used to write all the code themselves. This is super inefficient if you want to get stuff done faster, meaning if you want to get something done in a week rather than two months, you should remove repetitive tasks. This is what frameworks help with the most. Libraries help you solve very direct problems. So now let's talk about getting contracts for yourself as a developer and as a Python developer. So what you wanna do essentially is use the skills that you're building to go on places like Upwork, which is a freelancing platform and get contracts on there. It's very beginner friendly, uh, regardless of what crazy angry YouTubers are saying, it's not that hard to approach Upwork, especially if you use the guy that I'm about to link you, which is right here. So click on the video right here. There's a whole playlist with how to use Upwork and get contracts as a Python developer or a different type of developer. So watch the video list right here, and it's also in the description if you can't click on the video. If you have any comments or questions, I usually respond to the best ones myself below this video here in the comment section.